Hello, I am Glenn Hall. Today is June 16th, and this is part 28 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. Today I'm going to share the latest video put out by probably Alexandra. I want you to listen to the entire video. It's a little bit over one hour long, very important. I believe that God has given Alexandra revelation by the Holy Spirit, and he has also given her a very sharp, quick, and brilliant mind, a mind that can research and a mind that can put facts together in a very coherent way. I don't agree with everything that she says in this video, but I agree with most of it. And all of us need to understand exactly what she's saying. At the end of her presentation, I am going to tell you a couple of the areas in which I disagree with her that are very important for us to understand at this particular time that we live in. So here's Alexandra. Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra and welcome to the third and final video in the Mind Game series. In the first video, we talked about how light features at the core of all world religions. In the second video, we talked about who and what Lucifer is. Today, we will be discussing possibly the most complex occult belief system. And if my bun looks a bit different, I was really going for continuity, but I actually recorded this entire video only to not have any of the files save. So this is round two. Let's get started. If you have not watched the previous videos in the series, please do so because they all build on each other. Also, I advise you to please read Revelation 13. I will leave the ESV version on the screen. You can pause to read it. But if you prefer a different translation, please read that before we get started. I personally read multiple different versions and I use an online concordance as well as a lexicon. Revelation is not just linear, but overlaps about three times. The book of Revelation is literal and figurative. Like the parables, symbolic language is often used to describe events both spiritual or physical or concurrent. It's written in sections. The introduction, John's vision of Jesus, the seven churches that represent not just physical churches, but different types of believers in Jesus. Next, John is taken to heaven and describes the seven scenes he sees there. After that comes the seven seals, which only Jesus is worthy to open. After the seals are the seven trumpets. Some of the seals and trumpets run concurrently. The fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpet are also the three woes. In Revelation 13, the fall of the beast of the sea is described in more detail in chapters 17 and 18. The beginning of chapter 19 describes the return of Jesus which is the same event described in chapter 14. Chapters 20 through 22 detail what happens after Jesus returns for his bride. Don't forget why you're watching this video and why you started researching and sharing information with the people around you in the first place. Ultimately, it's out of love. You don't want the people around you to be deceived. I know it's really hard when you feel rejected and alone, but please, I implore you, don't give up. If you feel overwhelmed learning about what's just beneath the surface of this world, take a break and lean on the one who has overcome the world. All right, in this video, we will be discussing something called the Force, as well as the difference between the light and dark in the mysteries and why God does not belong to either of these sides. Illuminated or enlightened people use what they call the Force. Most people think of Star Wars, the idea is similar but not the same. Within Luciferianism, it is believed that there is a force, or an energy source, that can be used for evil or good, depending on how the practitioner chooses to use it. The same way the descriptors Satan and Lucifer refer to two different sides of the same coin. Satan means adversary, while Lucifer means bringer of light respectively. But both are the ways the Bible describes the fallen angel that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. Satan represents the use of the evil side or the dark side of this force, where Lucifer represents the supposed good or light side of the force. 
In the ancient times, witchcraft was seen as a virtue or tool that could be used as either good or evil, depending on the user. And these two figures of mother and daughter are representative of how magic was seen by the ancients, with one being a source of good in the daily life of the family, and the other representing evil in her way of keeping soldiers from returning home. Two sides of the same coin, who are magical in ways that suit their own personal needs. The force dynamic can also be seen in scripture as the two beasts of Revelation 13, the beast of the sea and the beast of the earth. One that is bad, fearsome, and terrible, and one that masquerades as good, or like a wolf in sheep's clothing. In my opinion, this second one is much more dangerous because most don't see it for what it truly is. The two work in a good cop, bad cop dynamic. The light side can step in to present the solution to the problem created by the dark. The narrative and the counter-narrative, they're both accounted for. This should already be obvious to those who follow God because there is no evil in him. Thus, he is incompatible with the idea of this force. The high-level Luciferians practice either black magic or white magic, respectively, and the definitions for this purpose are as follows. Black magic is the use and application of the force with a selfish or material aim. It's important to understand that these people do not worship Lucifer in a traditional sense, or any of his many names. They serve him and do his bidding to achieve their own ends. They essentially think they are the ones in control, working with him, as opposed to working for him. And on the other hand, white magic is the use of that spiritual force solely for the supposed good of and the benefit of others. This force has nothing to do with God. Their light is not God. It's their God, Lucifer. Luciferians worship Lucifer in his many forms of light. <laughs> the light represents his wisdom and knowledge and the fact that he is a light bringer or an enlightenment giver, right? Achieving enlightenment, becoming a Lucifer yourself. But as you'll remember, this light has nothing to do with the true light that is the eternal creator. Within the mystery traditions, there are two sides, the metaphorical light and dark. Pythagoras believed in the idea of two antagonistic principles. He called one unity, light, the right hand, equality, stability, and a straight line. The other he named binary, darkness, the left hand, inequality, instability, and a curved line. Of the colors, he attributed white to the good principle and black to the evil one. Do not confuse the light path with God. Light is not automatically good. To assume anything that appears light is good is to not test the spirits, which we're called to do. There is no darkness in God at all. Nothing to be the polar opposite of. Remember the core or the origin of this force tree. Godrael, the fallen angel who deceived Eve, the teachings that brought about all the mystery religions. God has no part of that tree. It is not good and evil. It's bad and evil, and evil comes disguised. Anything resembling God or sounding slightly biblical does not mean that it is. Do not forget that Satan masquerades as an angel of light, as a Lucifer. The scriptures warn us of the many people and places used by our enemies to take on this light side of the force in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. God has one path straight and narrow. In 1 John 1 5, it says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God does not have to have darkness to have light. He is not like the occult yin-yang symbol. John 8 12 says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. What was the first thing that Lucifer proved? His light brought death to Adam and Eve. His light is the light of death. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Those with the patience or the endurance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus are written in the book of life. So by contrast, belonging to Lucifer and his kingdom, your name is in the book of death. The light of Lucifer Godrael and the fallen will never lead you to God, to truth. God is the only true source of wisdom. 
This angers a lot of people, as I'm sure many have found out in their own life. But don't let anyone's hateful words sway you from leaning on the word. Jesus said in John 15, 18 through 19, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The Bible tells us about two types of deceptions to watch out for in these end times. The false Christs and false prophets. The false Christs usually fall into the dark side, where the false prophets fall into the light side. False Christs act as Christ counterfeits. Either they play God, or they claim to follow God while actually promoting and working for the God of this world. Strong's Concordance defines a false prophet as one who, acting the part of a divinely inspired prophet, utters falsehoods under the name of divine prophecies. This includes many of the modern forms of the New Age, including those that claim that they get channeled messages via angels, like Archangel Michael or Archangel Gabriel. That is a type of a false prophet. These two types of deceptions display this force again. The false Christs, or the Christ replacements, think secret societies, government agendas, overt attempts to kill God via the media, satanic ritual abuse programming, mass programming, education, and social conditioning, also called the dark side, sometimes called the cabal or the deep state. The ones that dictate whether someone or something lives or dies. Then, there are the false prophets, the ones masquerading as good or using the light side. These are the New Age hopium teachings, the mystic teachings that fill some modern megachurches, and any love and light or positive-seeming things, like the promise of a wonderful future free of the cabal, miraculous technology, cures for diseases, and heaven on earth. Channelers and New Age teachings fall into this category. Both of these types of deceptions stem from the same root, worship of the self but they ultimately are two different sides of the same coin, both belonging to Lucifer's kingdom and his attempts to deceive everyone. The paths and the mysteries are often called the left-hand path and the right-hand path. The term the left-hand path was first popularized in Western occultism by, shocker, Helena Blavatsky. The tiles on the brother manic floors are black and white for a reason. Nothing is superfluous. The same can be said for architecture, movie scenes, Anything you see that's been placed there has been placed there on purpose. Symbols are their universal language, and Luciferianism is built upon a world of symbols with various understandings of the same symbol. Different groups view the same thing different ways. An upward-pointing triangle is a symbol of the exoteric, and the downward triangle of the esoteric. In the case of the Force, the upward represents the dark, the beast of the sea, and the downward, the light, the beast of the earth, masculine and feminine, respectively. The light side of the Force does not represent the true God at all. It is the two different sides of the Force, or magical power of Godrail, that the magician aims to control. The black and the white tiles represent the two paths on which those who control the world belong. They're part of the same checkerboard floor, the human army of the fallen. For the lower levels of the hierarchy, I believe the two paths are not exclusive, but like a chess game, a player can alternate paths when it suits their pursuits or the overall goal. The black represents Saturn, Lead, Satan, the Dark Sun, or the Black Sun, or Inversion, while the White represents the Sun, the Light, Illumination, Gold, and Lucifer. In alchemy, Saturn is associated with lead while the Sun is associated with gold, and one of the supreme goals of alchemy was to transmute lead into gold. Again, not literally, but rather figuratively. The Scottish Rite motto is Order Ab Chao, or Order Out of Chaos, from dark to light. A New York chapter of Brother Women, Organization of Triangles, posts quotes on their Instagram specifically about rising above the storm, and you will find sunshine. The dawn comes after the darkness, as well as many JFK quotes. Just more examples of dark to light. And remember this, there's a crack in everything for a reason. How else can the light get in? Another example of this type of imagery is Janus. Janus is the Roman god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, doorways, passages, and endings. The Romans regarded Janus as an important god, which is evident in one of his titles, Divum Dios, which means the god's god. Before a sacrifice could be made to any of the other deities, Janus would first be invoked and a libation be poured for him. The rationale for this is that since Janus was the doorkeeper to the heavens, it was through him that all the other gods and goddesses may be reached. He is the two-faced god. 
Being two-faced is sometimes even called being Janus-faced. Sometimes Janus is depicted with a male and a female face. Occasionally, they have a scepter and one or two keys, one gold and one of silver. The Romans, quote, borrowed Janus from the Sumerians. Usmu, or Isimud, was the messenger god to the Sumerian god Enki, also known as the god of Aquarius. Enki is considered to be equated to Saint Germain in New Age circles. The double-headed eagle displays the same symbolism. This image represents dark and light. Androgyny, left hand, right hand, the principle of polarity, and ultimately, Gadriel, two sides of the same coin. Notice how this picture also depicts the Kabbalah, two pillars representing the head, the crown or Ketar, with the Ensof, the light, of enlightenment above it. The Brother Manic Forum of Light says this about the two-headed god Janus. Here yet another meaning of the two faces of Janus appears. He is the master of the two ways, to which the two solstitial doors, or the solstice gates, give access, the two ways of the right and the left. For here we find again that another symbolism indicated above, which the Pythagoreans represented by the letter Y. The Y represents the two systems, the left and the right, the dark and the light, the first beast and the second beast of Revelation 13. Two different paths, heart of one letter, one leader. The two beasts described in Revelation also represent the light and dark, the left and right, the black and white, light and gold, past and future, bad and evil. Two beasts, same dragon. The left eye, the right eye, same face. Each group of occultists belongs to one of these two beast systems depending on the type of magic they practice. Gadriel created these sides to fight his war. He has the entire plan, while those on either side do not. This is, according to an occult source, the Kaibalion, something called the Great Fourth Hermetic Principle, the Principle of Polarity. The Kaibalion is a compilation of hermetic teachings, or esoteric philosophy. These same doctrines are based on principles originally explained by Hermes Trismegistus. Greeks and Egyptians recognized the equivalence of Hermes as Thoth. Hermes, ironically, was regarded as the divine trickster, and Thoth, the god of wisdom. Sound familiar? This symbol should also look familiar, as it closely resembles the symbol most associated with the occult story of Harry Potter. There are many, quote, laws explored in the Kybalion, one of which is in the message translation of the Bible. The law of correspondence, or as above, so below. This is one example of mystic Christianity and the occultists infiltrating churches over 100 years ago. Not every pastor, scientist, teacher, influential person, or group are brothers or in secret societies, fraternities, covens, or illuminati. They've been taught by those who were. The system perpetuates itself. Regarding the Force, the Kybalion speaks of the principle of polarity, which explains that there are two poles in everything, and that opposites are really only two extremes of the same thing, the difference being only in degree. An obvious example is that of hot and cold, both being a temperature, varying only in degree. Like and unlike are the same, two sides of the same coin. The law of polarity states, quote, everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same, opposites are identical in nature, but differ in degree, extremes meet, all truths are but half-truths, all paradoxes may be reconciled. I think of it like a battery. One pole is positive, one is negative, but both belong to the same battery. One pole, the Cabal, or the First Beast System, has an agenda of the Dark World Order, often called the New World Order. This beast is made of many countries and many rulers, all of one mind or body. They make war with the saints, they oppress and rule over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Those stuck in the Matrix or the Mind Game worship or do not work to fight against this beast and its power those whose names are not written in the Book of Life, which are the followers of Jesus Christ and who keep the commandments of God. But that's not all, folks. What would the dark force be without its pole, the light? That's where the second beast comes in. It specifically rises to deceive the elect, the followers of Jesus, if the first beast had not already deceived them. That is the goal stated. The other pole, the second beast, has an agenda of the light world order. The Bible tells us the second beast has two horns like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon. It's interesting to me that the Geneva 1599 translation says that it looks like the lamb, as in Jesus, but speaks like the dragon. The dragon being the serpent from the Garden of Eden, Godrail. It doesn't come as evil and murderous. 
It comes disguised as the light, the good coming to rid the world of evil, the first beast, of which it exercises all the power of, because ultimately they're part of the same body. It performs great signs and wonders, even making fire come down from heaven. The word here for fire can actually translate to light. There are many players on each side of these poles, but staying on just one side, no one has the complete plan. The entirety of the plan is understood and orchestrated by the battery, the body, the highest level generational occultists with the most ancient or secret knowledge working to achieve the plan Lucifer, Satan, Godrael, whatever you want to call him, had set out to fulfill since day one. After all, the dragon gives both sides their power. The queen is an example of someone who knows the entirety of the plan, not just the dark world order or the light world order's sides. The queen said, light overcomes darkness twice. Once on Christmas in 2015, It is true that the world has had to confront moments of darkness this year. But the Gospel of John contains a verse of great hope, often read at Christmas carol services. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And again on Easter in 2020. Many religions have festivals which celebrate light overcoming darkness. Such occasions are often accompanied by the lighting of candles. They seem to speak to every culture and appeal to people of all faiths and of none. They are lit on birthday cakes and to mark family anniversaries, when we gather happily around a source of light. It unites us. Q has said the same thing. She knew the whole plan and was making sure people understood that light overcomes darkness at this particular time in their game. A quick side note, in 2006, she was excommunicated from the Druids for a technicality. She doesn't speak Welsh, which is now required by exoteric Druidic law. The Queen played her role in the dark. She's playing her role in the light because she has that generational knowledge of creation out of destruction and knows how to get to Lucifer's kingdom, the golden age, which according to scripture will never arrive. The death of the old and the rebirth into this new world is necessary for their plan to succeed. Meghan and Harry refused to acknowledge the death of the dark side and were effectively excommunicated. The same goes for CEOs stepping down of prominent positions, companies going bankrupt, peculiarly specific earthquakes occurring in places known for human trafficking and programming centers, and strange cryptic messages like this one about an alligator in a Moscow zoo named Saturn dying. Those who are not on the light side now, which the pendulum of power has swung to, are being systematically eliminated, either literally or figuratively, as we've discussed before. The ones on the dark side who refuse to, quote, follow the light, are being stripped of their power and, in some cases, their lives. We'll get more into that in a second, but the stated goal of Q and President Trump is to, quote, drain the swamp. I think in light of all of the things going on, and you know what I mean by that, the fake news, the Comeys of the world, all of the bad things that went on, it's called the swamp. And you know what happened? And you know what I did? A big favor. I caught the swamp. I caught them all. Let's see what happens. Nobody else could have done that but me. I caught all of this corruption that was going on, and nobody else could have done it. Collectively, everything that can be regarded as the first beast essentially can be boiled down to being called the swamp. Revelation goes on to explain the next steps the second beast takes. It was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast may even speak and may cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. I've talked about my opinions on this topic before in videos like what is the image of the beast and in a convenient history. The word slain or killed means to kill outright, figuratively, to destroy, put to death, kill, slay, according to Strong's Concordance. The Greek word for nua is the word used in the Bible that means to literally kill, slay, or to murder someone by committing homicide. That word is not used once in Revelation. As you can see, every chapter and verse where it is used is in the green box. We've lived through a worldwide power shift among the elite occultists. The first to the second beast, the left to the right, the black to white, lead to gold, dark to light. The Bible shows this final transition in the end times. The problem with the light world order is ultimately that it is Lucifer's magnum opus, the world he has sought out since the beginning. It's Nimrod's Tower of Babel again, but this time, Gadrael truly thinks he will beat God. 
and at the very least, his mission is complete by taking as many souls away from God as he possibly can. One of the biggest ways this is being accomplished on the physical plane is hard for some to swallow and generally misunderstood. It is through mental manipulation or sophisticated networks of organized mind control. The work is done generationally or over time. I want to put a trigger warning here to anyone who has been or thinks they may have been involved in mind control programming or ritual abuse. Please skip ahead 10 minutes to skip this section. Some people within the Illuminati hierarchy act in ways that may seem contradictory at times to the public, but ultimately completes a mission, no matter how long or drawn out it may be. This is because, more often than not, we see fronts, or front altars, whatever the public knows this person as. Okay. I feel like I've been missing out on life. Like what part of life? Life! Like things and things going on. Like I feel like I'm behind or something. I know that sounds so weird, but no, I do. Many, but not all, of the top of the hierarchy are programs, double agents. While not medically confirmed, many writings about Helena Blavatsky point to her having multiple personalities or being a programmed multiple. The use of mind control goes back millennia. Just one example can be found in a book from the early 1900s called Delacroix, Etude d'Histoire et de Psychologie de Mysticisme. It discusses a convent in the early 1600s that had ties to the elite genealogies that claimed to be possessed by demons. These demons made the people act like animals. They barked like dogs, they went into trances, and they displayed uncontrollable changes in personality, which they were amnesic about afterwards. This behavior describes the same type of symptoms displayed by monarch survivors who have had their minds fractured. Trauma-based programming is the intentional creation of dissociative states like dissociative identity disorder or tertiary structural dissociation. I cannot overemphasize the importance they place on fracturing the mind to create alters and systems within a slave and their hierarchies. Trauma-based programming is used in order to create people who are enslaved via mind control. The result is a system of alters within a person who have all been programmed with specific roles and tasks and they're largely unknown by most of the others within the system or the body of the person. The mind is the most complex and powerful computer. Programming is a lot like building a computer with software and codes and commands and sometimes programs that run behind other programs, viruses, that sort of thing. Programming occurs in countless places such as hospitals, universities, military locations, religious buildings, medical clinics, and, and many, many more. By governments, the entertainment industry, religious fronts, and secret societies. Yosef Mengele is one of the most well-known figures in mind control programming, and it's come a long way since World War II as far as technology and sophistication. Mind control is by no means a new phenomenon. According to an article written by Ron Patton quoting David Carrico's book from 1992, The Egyptian Brother Manic Satanic Connection, quote, One of the earliest writings giving reference to occultism is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, a compilation of rituals explicitly describing methods of torture and intimidation to create trauma, the use of potions or drugs, and the casting of spells or hypnotism, ultimately resulting in the total enslavement of the initiate, that I will add is undetectable to the general public. Patsy had sent a doll company a picture of John Monet, and they made a doll that supposedly looked like her. Patsy saw the doll lying in a box. She said it looked like John Monet was in a coffin. Sometime after John Bonet was put to bed on Christmas night, the Christmas magic turned into a family nightmare. Bear in mind that a good percentage of the people or puppets in high-level positions have countless functions, personalities, missions, and allegiances. A relatively small number of members in the hierarchy are allowed to move up with unfractured consciousness, or without multiple personalities. This also protects the hierarchy because many of the personalities don't speak to each other. They don't hold the memories each other holds. So the hierarchy are able to file away their acts like filing cabinets in the mind, never to be opened by ones that are not supposed to know that information. I talked more about this in Lucifer's Playground. It's just bizarre to have the media we do today, and we can see programming of slaves play out before our eyes. Uh, oh. Believe it or not, the most stunning thing about Courtney isn't her provocative appearance. It's her birth certificate. That's right, this girl is 16 years old, married to a man more than three times her age. The byproduct of their own slavery is what actually ends up enslaving or programming the masses, consuming their product. Most, if not all, mass media, not independent made things, 
things made by larger corporations and distributed to the masses, is a byproduct of the worldwide mind control programming enterprise. Take Disney, for example. No one has sold the world magic better than Disney. Mind control imagery is literally everywhere all over the world. K-pop has quite a few examples, like this one song called Insane by Ajax. An occult piece of media can be defended as, quote, art, in order to hide in plain sight. Take Alejandro Jodorowsky's film The Holy Mountain, for example. I advise against watching this film. And just one more example of many is the American band Paramore. They have a song called Brick by Boring Brick. Some of the lyrics include, You built up a world of magic because your real life is tragic. Now, some commenters are of the opinion that this song means that when you get to a certain age where you start to grow up and realize things aren't what they were, that you let go of childish things. But on a deeper level, some saw it as a song about dissociative behaviors that are onset by childhood trauma. Close, but still not quite. The reality is this is a dark and horribly sad video. The little girl with the monarch wings lives in a happy world to her, which is her doing as she's told by her programmers or the mothers of darkness. The entire world turns against her when she throws off the wings. Don't ever think of leaving the cult. You will become a traitor and you will receive a traitor's death. It's terrible. Most media is, if you know what you're looking at. The overall message is meant to teach a lesson to the victim. Now, this is not an unusual idea. As people, we're like gum. As we grow up and go through life, we pick up things along the way that form us. Media like the movies we watch, the music we listen to, these all shape the lens of our reality. We internalize the messages subconsciously. Deprogramming involves a good deal of unsticking all of this stuff. And while the themes and motives we internalize as free people on the surface are things like love overcomes all or the hero always wins kind of a deal. But that's not true for the underground. Entire songs, scenes, and movies are different when played for a victim of mind control. The villain may win. The hero dies a horrible death. Lyrics of popular songs are different. What we get is a sanitized version of the true media used in programming slaves. One normal movie that can be studied as a script or to learn the themes and messages used in mind control is a cartoon called The Ringing Bell. Celebrities have displayed their programming being shifted from dark to light in the last few years. And our media works the same way. Even things like documentaries and news. What is this story trying to get me to believe? What is the narrative? Where is my mind being steered? Guys. Now more than ever, stock selection matters. Now more than ever, you need a workout that you can do at home. Now more than ever, all together now. Right now, more than ever, we know. Now more than ever, it's important to feel safe at home. Because now, more than ever, being a good neighbor means everything. Like a good neighbor, stay positive. There are various different reasons for mind control operations being carried out. All of them demonic and all of them glorifying and working for Godrael. More understanding is needed on this topic by the general public, which is why I'm bringing it up. Just like architecture, nothing is superfluous. Art is not just art. Music is not just music. Movies are not just movies. Everything put in front of us was placed there for a reason. Once you begin to see that, you can easily see the trickery and no longer be fooled or naive. On a more disturbing note, many passively consume very violent and vicious content through cartoons or horror films, but the reality is that the methods of torture depicted in this kind of dark media is very real and happens every day to programming ritual victims. Another issue is gatekeeping. You'll notice celebrity tell-alls that are always absent of any real substance or truth, like Leah Remini never discussing the child trafficking and programming done in this organization or the truth of what this man is really involved in, or this man. These shows are a way to make you feel like you know everything about a group while being told absolutely nothing. So then you move on to the next topic. The bigger picture is also not complete without knowing the puzzle piece of programming. Programming millions of individuals is a major way they have accomplished their various goals. Most humans would not be able to do the things they're asked to do or programmed to do without programming. The cabal or the dark side is not the only ideology using trauma-based mind control. The alliance is just as guilty. Many modern New Age guru leaders or channelers or mystic Christians are part of the, quote, light side of programming. It's an extremely sophisticated science, again, like building a computer from scratch, but demons and magic are the foundation of it all. Okay, back to the force, the dark and the light. Godrael built both sides of the spiritual war we find ourselves in. 
One of his main goals is to return to a golden age, or to Atlantis, the world before the flood. And he uses both sides to do this in a Hegelian dialectic. Bring the world to a point of absolute desperation that any solution is better than the current situation or the proposed detrimental future. Financial ruin, oppression, loss of rights, and so on. A friend of mine once said, it's no wonder that Godrail has created two systems to be at work in the world, one to be the darkness, and one to fool people into thinking that they aren't siding with the darkness when they actually are. Both paths are an illusion of choice, because ultimately, they're the same. It doesn't matter whether it's the right or the left, both hands serve the same master. Gadrael, or Lucifer, the dragon, the old serpent who was cursed in the Garden of Eden, gives both the Antichrist and False Prophet Beast systems of Revelation 13 their power, with his army of other fallen angels, demons, and Nephilim spirits making up the mind game we're in. Everything associated with dark occultists, world banks, organized crime, the pedocracy, false flags, the deep state, the underground, fear-based rituals, and fear in general. Yes, well, if people remain under that fear spell for too long, it looks like they'll become frozen with terror. Permanently. Those who destroy everything for personal gain and put humanity into a constant state of anxiety and terror or the Antichrist system, the Beast of the Sea, can be attributed to the dark side of the Force, Black Magic, Satan, and the armies of Godrail doing his left-hand work. Everything that can be associated with the Light Occultists, the False Prophet system, can be attributed to Lucifer, the Light Face or Side, and the armies working with this path, like claims of false hope, the military, White Hats, Alliance world leaders like Putin and JFK, those calling themselves light workers or New Age channels, Q, Saint Germain, Gold, New Technology, Prosperity and Peace, the antithesis to the dark side, its pole. I even know of some pastors who are encouraging their congregation to accept the future prosperity funds I've talked about in countless videos. Both are faces of the angel god Rael acting as the mastermind, the architect, or the builder of it all. I'm sure many of you can think of lots of other things falling into both sides. This is just a really brief overview. The 2012 film My Pet Goat 2 shows these two sides. The left and right hand both belong to Godrail, but each path has a different purpose to fulfill and a different way of achieving their goal. The black male slaves, the programs, celebrities, politicians, sports heroes, well-known bankers, are lower on the totem pole of the elite, and they act like pawns in the chess game. Each believes their side will win. Only the highest level understands the entire game. These uber-elite, if you will, know the entirety of the plan. They know the plan of Godrail, not just the dark side or the light side, but the integration of both. If both sides of a war knew the outcome was predetermined, the soldiers wouldn't fight. But since those left on an exoteric basis don't know, the pawns on each side of the chessboard truly believe they will win. The highest levels understand the world needs to be steered through both sides in order to achieve their goal, a game of Hegelian dialectics or magic. Both sides can weave through aspects of light and dark, but follow the basis of whichever side their philosophy falls into. Left hand celebrates ego, the right hand works endlessly to destroy it, which ultimately ends up feeding it, but that's another story. What one side sees as good, the other is bad, and vice versa. The left hand is power, money, greed, self, addiction, materialism, and pleasure, while the right hand is others, love, spirituality, humility, and health, so what's positive to some is negative to others. Magical systems work like metaphysics, but instead of abstract concepts, they work via what Hegel called picture thinking, using symbols and metaphors. Most are familiar with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which has both light and dark sides, and is generally considered the, quote, positive force, usually used by those using the right-hand path. The Tree of Life is the most commonly known sign, but there is also the Klepoth, or the Tree of Death, the negative force, used mostly by left-hand practitioners. Both of these systems represent duality, the light and dark, never truly separated. One is a shadow of the other. The force of Luciferianism binds them together. This complete picture is also a depiction of the two beasts, the false prophets and the false Christs. There is no escape from the light and dark in both sides. It is always together. There is always a pole. That is where God is different. God has no polarity. He is not light or dark. He is holy. 
and is the eternal light with no darkness in him. The Hermetics or Luciferians believe that the mental world rules the physical. Much of this war is fought on the mental plane, and the thoughts and philosophies held by the powerful are what has shaped the world. The Illuminati use things like the Kabbalah and the Tarot as a type of universal board game. It's how they manipulate world events, powers, and their own rule. They have perfected programming so much that the population conforms to and perpetuates the reality they create for us. Like a bunch of actors in a play, or characters in a video game. A few of us have woken up, and have broken the fourth wall, or become self-aware. These powerful organizations and leaders are historically capable of shifting cultures from respect for one another into hatred for anyone who threatens the cause, leading to wars, death, hatred, destruction of nations, and so on. If the mind is like a computer, magic is akin to hacking the mind. Magic isn't some made-up fantasy story you'd see in a movie. The high-level occultists accomplish much of their goals through mental manipulation. I briefly touched on this in part two of the Mind Game series, where occultists were the true originators of alchemy, astrology, and psychology, with Hermes the founder of these schools of thought. Modern astronomy has been derived from astrology, chemistry arose from alchemy, and mystical psychology or what we would now call Luciferianism, was the forerunner to modern psychology. The elite don't care about us individually. They care about us collectively. Like a school of fish, they steer the current or the direction they want us to go with magic. As humans, we all attempt to have some sort of control over our lives. Most ordinary individuals who turn to magic do so for that reason. But the elite use magic on a much larger scale and affect the entire plane. Consider this. Without mind control programming, small and large scale, would the world be where it is today? God deprograms us, and for all of us who have been freed from our programming, understand how difficult it is to detect within yourself. Yet, you make decisions and actions based on what you've been programmed to accept, want, or believe. By that logic, the force takes away free will. On a mass scale, they steer humanity in the way they want it to go. God does not force anyone. He frees you from the force. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Don't do as the crowd does. Don't play Lucifer's mind game by his rules. God guards our thoughts and is the only true way to be deprogrammed from this mind game. Jesus is the only one who can save you from this world. You have to understand how the occult operates to understand the bigger picture of what's going on in our reality. They believe in a force that can be wielded for either good or evil depending on the practitioner's intentions. Now, this cannot be from God, since God has no pull, no other side of the coin, no evil found in him at all. God is holy. Evil is the result of being separated from God. He is entirely good, and his light is superior to any false light represented in the occult. The dark occultists worship themselves as gods. The light occultists worship themselves as part of the collective that is God. It's the black versus white, sun versus moon, never-ending tug of war between the two sides, but neither of these sides is God. Ultimately, at the absolute highest levels, it's understanding that these forces, black and white, are the same. The second beast of Revelation exercises all the power of the first beast because both are given authority by the dragon. And proof of this is given to us in Matthew 12, 26, which says, And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? That's why this division of light versus dark isn't a division at all. It's a Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. Yes, the dark side. The left-hand path is being revealed. All those who selfishly harmed humanity for their own game are being exposed by the right hand, the light side, the one concerned on the surface with humanitarian selflessness. Every act of creation is first an act of destruction, said Pedro Picasso, and they are creating a golden age through the destruction of the old. At least they think they'll achieve this golden world. This is because people have been conditioned into thinking there is only one enemy, who appears overtly evil, and anyone who opposes him is automatically good. But many don't recognize the evil hidden in the light facade. And in this light side, there is no need for a savior, because they are the heroes, the light ridding the world of darkness. They see themselves as God. Okay, we have to do this. We're going to talk about Q for a moment. And trust me, I don't want to do this either, but this section would not be complete 
if I omit a large part of what's going on today. You calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther! I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, and please remember that if you disagree with me, these are just my characterization of facts. I'm not trying to push my opinion onto anyone. I've been watching Q for a few years now, and it has not gone away. Actually, it's gotten bigger, and support has gone completely worldwide. Unlike the utter failure of the cabal-owned and operated Cicada 3301 and Tabula Rasa. Not all, but some followers of the phenomenon known as the Q movement see it as God speaking through Q. I don't bring this up to judge anyone. I'm talking about it because I believe many are being lied to, and I'm trying to get them to take another objective look at the whole movement for themselves. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. I'm only attempting to point and say, hey guys, I think this movement is a stumbling block. One example is a new book called QAnon and the Thousand Years of Peace, Destroying the New World Order and Taking the Kingdom of Christ by Force. This book says, quote, What we're all experiencing worldwide is not just another political event. As QAnon Post 2937 says, This is not simply another four-year election. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. Quoting the President of the United States, He's not just talking about the U.S. government or any single nation's government. He means reclaim control over the governing of the world from the worldwide criminal mafia. This will transform the world for a thousand years. A video called The American Made President by Carpe Donctum is about having pride in America. Similar to the way Americans felt after 9-11, but instead of a tragedy, this is about a hope for a future. The video peculiarly focuses on the phrase, here we mark the as well as Janus Motorcycles. Janus is an American motorcycle company that was specifically invited to the White House to the Made in America Products Showcase. There are 46 companies that make motorcycles in America, so for this specific one to be picked seems significant. They sell bikes with names like Halcyon, Phoenix, and Griffin. Their slogan is Old Ideas for a New World. This reminds me of how the most ancient of teachings, the worthless knowledge the fallen gave to humanity, has been repackaged time and again and presented as new. Back to Q. In 2017, drop number 382, an Anon said, People hunger for light. Have lived under the darkness for too long. Thank you. To which Q responds, We have tremendous worldwide support. Satan, as in Obama, has left the White House. If Obama represented the Cabal, or a Satan, or a Satan, the dark side of the Force, in this specific post, Q is acknowledging themselves as the Light, the Polar to the Dark, a Lucifer. As you'll remember from my previous video, in the occult, the concept of Lucifer is a noun, a person as in the fallen angel, as well as a thing or anyone who is considered to be a light bearer, enlightener, or bringer of wisdom, someone who is illuminated. The point is to initiate the world into the mysteries. As Alice Bailey said in the spirit of Brother Manry, they are therefore sometimes known as the Illuminate and can direct the searchlight of truth wherever its beams are needed to guide the pilgrim on his way. They guide the candidate until he has gained the right to stand in the East before the Presence and there, before the Brethren, prove himself initiate. Stage by stage, they assist at the unfolding of the consciousness of the candidate until the time comes when he can enter into light and, in his turn, become a light bearer one of the Illuminati who can assist the Lodge on High in bringing humanity to light. Such as those in the higher levels of Brother Manry and other powerful organizations and positions, anyone who is influential in shaping the psyche of the masses is a Lucifer. The word Lucifer means light bearer, one who brings light. The light represents enlightenment or knowledge. Like the word Satan, Lucifer is not a name. It's a description. Many organizations use the description of light bringer or knowledge giver to symbolize various ideas regarding enlightenment, deeper spiritual knowledge, or illumination. Anyone who takes on the role of bearing this so-called light to his fellow men, as Brotherman Charles W. Ledbetter writes, is a Lucifer. Anyone at the highest position in a profession that dictates the way the world works or is an influential position that shapes people's opinions or thoughts or disseminates a crafted narrative or a script to a large mass of humanity to achieve a part in their Hegelian dialectic, no matter how small, is a Lucifer. By that definition, then, Q 
is a Lucifer, something bringing humanity enlightenment, or as Q says, the Great Awakening. Is it not written in QMAP.pub on QDrop 666 to follow the light? In May of 2019, Trump tweeted, this is a bright new age, the age of enlightenment, which Q Post 144 is specific to point out. In the early days, decoding Q posts became a way of life for anons watching the boards. People initially believed everything was happening live. It wasn't until the first or second year they realized the Q-drops were actually prophetic. Entire websites are dedicated to these correspondences and any other confirmation called Q-proofs, future proofs past. Here's an example of how the Q-movement positions itself in a prophetic style. Q-drop 4389 on June 3rd of 2020 says, Dark to Light, and references or fulfills Drop 1440 from three years prior. The Light World Order is ultimately promising freedom. Freedom from the cabal, from the dark, from the occult, from the pedocracy, from the media, illegal taxation, and so on. But this is not freedom from the brother manic slavery system. It is the culmination of it. Indeed, the future proves past. As I discussed the history of revolving back to the Golden Age in An Inconvenient History, this plan of freedom from the cabal has been the plan at the highest levels since the beginning. I'm sorry, but I see this movement in line with the forms of light worship discussed in part one, as well as the false prophets described in the Bible, specifically sent to deceive the elect, the ones believing in Jesus and God. The Cabal, or the Dark, has many coordinated attempts to discredit Q, but as Q post 4348 from May 29th of 2020 says, fear, panic, loss of narrative control, you are the news now. The mental transmutation is reaching completion. The Q drop links to this article about an online, quote, church that studied Q with Bible prophecies, which says, inside the first church of QAnon, where Jesus helps fight the deep state. Yet as I just showed, Jesus is nowhere to be found in this picture. This article was written as a hit piece by known disinfo agent Mike Rothschild. However, the church mentioned in this article does believe Q is helping Jesus fulfill prophecy. Well, a 35,000-year-old entity named Ramtha also believes Q is here to save humanity. This beautiful smile lit up the whole room, and he said, I am Ramtha the Enlightened One. He said, I have come to make you a light to the world. I am a teacher and a god. I am a god because I experienced all of these things. And I am a teacher, not of truth, but of philosophy. At Ramtha's School of Enlightenment, they too believe Q is ridding the world of darkness. When we go on, we go on! Yeah, Washington! A popular saying in the New Age and metaphysical community is love and light. People ask for others to send love and light for troubling situations, or you might hear others use it as a greeting. But when we break down the phrase, what does love and light actually mean? The energy and vibration of love is that of creation, as opposed to hatred, which is the vibration of destruction, dark and light. Light is the energy and frequency of wisdom, whereas dark would be the frequency of ignorance. Therefore, when you are offering someone love and light, you are offering them the frequency of creation and wisdom, where the cabal kept us in a frequency of destruction and ignorance. Q drop 3889, Q says, love and light, patriot. A phenomenon Q took credit for was a 17 second wave over the earth on November 11 of 2018. A mysterious seismic wave recently shook earth and scientists can't explain it. QDrop3979 is a redrop of an earlier post from April 18th of 2020 that has an anagram for CHQ or chloroquine, linking a New Age YouTube video of a healing frequency telling you to clear your mind and heal. This image in the video is actually a representation of the sun. Sun Pharmaceuticals uses it as their logo. Not only was the video a New Age healing frequency video, but Sun Pharma manufactures hydrochloroquine and has donated 2.5 million tablets to the U.S. And you'd be surprised at how many people are taking it, especially the frontline workers, before you catch it. 
hydroxychloroquine? I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. Those who have not kept up with the Q phenomenon are more likely to be caught up in a fear bondage loop because they still trust the media. One of the most prominent arms of the cabal, or the dark. One of the largest ways the cabal communicated was via the media, TV, movies, music, entertainment, and news sites owned by the same companies who own the television stations, arms of the same conglomerate. Like an octopus. They send messages via news stories, documentaries, disinformation shows, false histories, false science, or propaganda, under the guise of entertainment. They use numbers or symbols to confirm to the esoteric listeners or watchers in the club when the story is following a particular narrative. For example, they may use the same first and last letter of a name. And numbers like 13 or 33, as well as strategically placed things like globes. They manipulate our, they manipulate our history books. The history books are not true. It's a lie. That's right, my The history books are lying. You need to know that. You must know that. The talking points remain in line if they all follow the script. The higher level media is dominated by programmed multiples carrying out orders. It's a way to make all media agree and form a well-organized reality for the viewer, whether they consciously know it or not. But things have changed a little. But again, I think people felt like the Supreme Court made the decision here in Wisconsin that it was time to open up. But you can see, here, just around. Nobody's wearing them. Nobody's, uh, there you go, including the cameraman. Yeah. Katie. There is now an opposing side to this once unquestioned power source of the media. One of the first things that the Trump administration did was gaslight the media. This has never happened before. Almost every president prior to Trump was in coordination with the media, so the media was mostly on their side. Q spent years teaching the keyboard warriors to learn their comms, or the military communications. They communicate differently than the cabal, and the cabal has a hard time controlling the narrative since Trump was inaugurated. Like holes in a canoe they're just trying to plug up before the boat fills with water. But past presidents communicated to the people via the media. Trump communicates with the people through Q and Twitter. There's nothing I'd rather do than get rid of my whole Twitter account, but I'm able to get to, I guess, 186 million people when you add up all the different accounts and uh, add Facebook and Instagram. It's a lot of people, and that's more than uh, the media companies have, frankly, by a lot. So I'm able to refute fake news, and that's very important. I the internet is the chosen arm of communication for the light side or the alliance at the moment. Memes are a successful way the light has communicated. The Cabal's AIs can't read images yet, and the light side has used this to their advantage. Q encouraged their followers to learn their comms of the light side, especially through making memes. Without this interconnectivity, availability of devices, popularity of social media, and everyone worldwide being connected in one way or another, this entire internet war would be impossible. It's a slow game, and Trump is playing his role on the surface, above, but those who have kept up with Q see what's going on below, or what's hidden. Trump appeals to the exoteric while Q is esoteric. There are layers to this operation, and it can be very confusing for those who have not been keeping up. What's even more occult about all of this occultism is their use of something called mental transmutation. Some might call it the Great Awakening, but I'm arguing there's nothing great about this. And many don't understand the occult to know they're stuck in a rip current of occultism that will do nothing but bring them down. So what is mental transmutation? It's another hermetic principle found in the Kybalion. One of the foundational beliefs is that the universe is a mental creation, which is why magical systems like the Kabbalah are such a big deal to occultists. These Luciferians use magic, or the mind, along with demonic influences to affect change. Mental transmutation means the art of transforming or changing the condition, quality, or nature of the mind from one condition to another. There are two steps involved in mental transmutation, awareness and inversion. In order to transmute negative mental states into positive states, you must first be aware that you're experiencing a negative state. Hey guys, we're stuck in a pedocracy. Oh, and in the US, taxation is illegal. And you know what else? The news is fake. And if history is just yesterday's news, well then, Q has made the world aware of this negative state, the dark. All I have are negative thoughts. 
The second step is to polarize that state to the opposite state. Since you've correctly identified the negative, you now should know the positive. Drain the swamp and the fed, that sort of thing. The Hebrew meanings for the letter Q are sun, revolution, circle, and horizon. The Q pictograph most likely means sun at the horizon. The sun brings the world from dark to light. Truth shines light. Light saves humanity. As we've explored in this series, that is too vague. The light does not equate to the living God. According to the book Ancient Mystic Oriental Brother Manry, in Speculative Brother Manry, there is an advancement from a lower to a higher state, from darkness to light, from death to life, from error to truth. I hope you see now that these are poles, part of the same monster. Q plays the role of the light pole, exposing the darkness, the other side of the pole, or the sun ridding the world of that darkness, changing lead to gold. But do you see how these two can never be separated? And that God has no place within them at all? God has no pole. He is entirely outside of that system. Q is never once on the boards referred to Jesus in a single Q drop. They only refer to God. The closest reference was in Q drop 3707, which says, Merry Christmas, Anons, Patriots Worldwide. And Q responds, Nothing should ever replace Christ in Christmas. And God is on our side. We already discussed the light worship of Christmas in part one, but I also did in my video literally titled Take Christ Out of Christmas. Exchanging Jesus Christ for the sun, or an idea, a consciousness, is New Age Luciferianism, or a part of mystic Christianity. If it's true that some that follow Q believe that by awakening humanity, a changed or raised consciousness is what is going to rid the world of evil, we are the saviors of mankind then it's not the Christ of the Bible doing it. It's Christ consciousness. Instead, they only refer to God, partially quote verses, and remove the parts that reference Jesus. Q drop 4249 in particular bothered me for omitting Jesus. It's one thing to promise so many people vengeance and judgment on the wicked, but that role belongs to Jesus. John 5, 22 through 23 says it best. For the Father, or God, judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, Jesus, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Q does not honor the Son. Q meets the definition of a Lucifer, and Q makes false promises for the future. Where is Jesus? Why should we ever put our trust or faith in something other than him? Especially when he warns us of exactly this type of deception, something looking like the lamb, like him, but speaking like the dragon, a Lucifer. The dark side gave us a false past, one of evolution and false history. The light side gives us a false future, one of justice or ascension or world peace, without Jesus Christ, of course. No one has escaped being initiated into this mystery religion of the light unless they have been saved from this mind game by the living God. So back to the bigger picture, the religion of the light. In 1957, Alice Bailey wrote in The Externalization of the Hierarchy, quote, The three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church, the brother manic fraternity, and the educational field. She goes on to say, There is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. Remember that this was a work written in 1957. Now, in 2020, those who aren't controlled through religions or brother manic ideas have been through the education system and society as a whole. The only people unwelcome in this religion of the light are those who believe in the one true light, the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Jesus is the light of life. Godrael has the light of death. Jesus is truth, and Godrael is a liar. Jesus told the truth from the beginning, and Godrael lied from the beginning. 
These religions that worship Godrail's light are anti-Jesus or anti-Christ at the core. They can hide behind whatever shiny veneer they snow the masses or their initiates with. The residual hate from the fallen will always remain. Isaiah 520 warns those who exchange God for the false light of Godrail. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, which also means truth for lies or lies for truth. Jesus will not coexist with any other so-called God. The light of Godrail and the true light of Jesus are not and will never be the same. The difference boils down to this. From whom do you seek your knowledge, your salvation, Godrael or God? Indeed, Luciferianism exchanges the truth for lies by exchanging God for light. Romans 1 25 describes Godrael's Luciferian religion. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. This is what we discussed in part two of this mind game series. Therefore, God gave them up in their lusts of their heart to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. These false gods can be found across every continent in history and up to the present day. The exchange of worship and reverence for the creator has been replaced with worship of the creation and ultimately the worship of the self, or that by learning the secret knowledge ye shall be as gods. The New Age, or more accurately the Ancient Age, is a universal religion welcoming everyone who worships the light and only excludes those who believe in the truth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Buddhists, the Hindus, the Sikhs, humanists, scientismists, Muslims, witches, shamans, atonists, secular New Agers, atheists, anyone who rejects Jesus as their God and personal savior. All of these paths are unified by a common purpose the glorification of man, the oldest lie in the book, or men becoming gods. New Age writer William Thompson states, the new spirituality does not reject the earlier patterns of the great universal religions. Priests and church will not disappear. They will not be forced out of existence in the new age. They will be absorbed into the existence of the new age. Based upon history and all humanity has gone through up until today, looking at it as a whole, what if we already have a universal religion? We see variations of it everywhere in all religions. Follow the light, love and light, dark to light, yet this light is Godrael. Maybe there will never be a brand new worldwide religion because it would ultimately still worship the light. The light in any one of his forms and essentially is no different than what we already have today. At the core, a universal religion of light worship. Lucifer, Satan, Godrael, I don't think he cares what you call him or what religion you belong to as long as you worship him knowingly or unknowingly. Again, he won't divide his own kingdom, especially when it's working so well. In this mind game, there are two choices, the truth, or Luciferianism. The idea of light has been misused for millennia. John wrote that Jesus is the true light that gives light to everyone. All Jesus said and did was for all people. He didn't tell his apostles to start a secret society or a special rabbinic group to keep the information hidden. Jesus warned any society doing just that in Luke 12, 2-3. In the meantime, when so many thousands of people had gathered together that they were trampling one another, he began to say to his disciples first, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. Here Jesus talks about what the Pharisees did in secret, which was teach the philosophy of ancient Kabbalah and oral tradition, which later became the Zohar and the Talmud. Secret societies and hidden knowledge are incompatible with the teachings of Jesus. It's the end of this series, and I hope I've been clear on why I believe Luciferianism is incompatible with the truth. We align our beliefs with the power we find unity of trait or unity of purpose with. Lucifer's kingdom appeals to the human traits in all of us, striving for freedom or power and our inherent selfishness. Like a friend, God lets us make mistakes and grow from our struggles like a parent, giving us the freedom to choose our own paths, but not being free 
of the consequences. The way God wants us to live has nothing to do with control or dominance. It's a guide for what is best for us overall. A victor is never made without struggle. And the Bible is clear that if you choose to follow him, to truly follow him, you will be hated by the world and face many hardships, many tribulations. Many are not prepared to fight that battle. It's easier to stay with your old pal, the old serpent. Luke 6, 26 says, Woe to you when old people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. God demonstrates his purpose and traits countless times, not only in scripture, but every day. With so many organizations conspiring against humanity, it is a miracle that any of us have survived at all. The sun always rises and the moon always shines. Flowers still bloom, crops still come forth, the seasons still change, the oceans stay in their lane, and he shows us unconditional love. And yet we take it for granted. Jesus even continued to focus on others as he died on the cross, to forgive us instead of saving himself. The fallen angels and their demons do not display friendliness, unconditional love, and freedom. This is evident in the positions Godrail has placed his select few in. Humanity is subjugated through mind control, positions of power, wars, power struggles, money, greed, forced labor, false hope, and essentially is living through hell on earth. Jesus created the way out. God has already won this war and God royal knows that his time is up. John 16.33 says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Why didn't God just stop the fallen, one may ask? Because they have free will, and if they didn't have free will, neither would you. God does not have programmed slaves. Many falsely blame the one true creator for the strife and grief produced in this mind game, but the current reality is the product of a world devoid of godliness. The ones who have left the Luciferian light traps I talked about in the first part of the series and follow the one true God, not the spectacle of Luciferianism in its many forms. Like ice cream, there are many flavors, but the base is the same. The ones who have left have felt and seen this freedom firsthand. It's not easy, but it's better to walk alone in the truth than be safe in the crowd of lies. Had the all-knowing God stopped Godrael from acting on his own free will, he could also stop anyone, anywhere, from having their own autonomy. That's a dictator. We all have free will to choose what we do in the time we are given here. We have no control over being born and very little control over when we die. What we do in the meantime is what matters. Every day we're alive, we choose what is important to us, what we worship, whether that be making choices to get closer to God or further away. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. To say the dark is evil and of the devil and light is good and of God is saying God is part evil. The force energy is entirely god -trial. It's time to choose a side. As this entire series has explored, making the choice to follow the light, whether it be in the form of Lucifer, Satan, the dark or the false light is choosing to follow the ways of the world to ultimately follow Godrail, the liar from the beginning. So choose your side wisely. Jesus comes as a thief in the night. Okay, now that you've watched Alexandra's presentation, which is exceedingly good, and I commend her for it. I want to draw you to two major errors. And I do not fault her for this because she is a young Christian and just doesn't understand everything yet. None of us do. Both of these things that I'm going to talk about, I have discussed in depth in previous videos. So I will be pretty brief about it today. The first one deals with this scripture from Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Alexandra teaches that 
this new thing that's happening, this movement to light, is part of Satan's plan and that he always planned to move from bad to evil. I mean bad to good. From darkness to light. Satan is evil and he planned to utterly destroy this world through what the cabal, what the deep state was planning for us. And if you have been paying attention to events, if you've been paying attention to my videos and other videos dealing with the, the many evil things that Q has brought to light, I think you will agree. But I do agree with Alexandra in that many of those, perhaps even most of those that are part of the Q movement, part of those who support Donald Trump, are part of a religious thinking that is exactly like she describes. You know, part of the New Age thought. And God took me through looking at some videos recently that really showed me that in a very profound and stark way. However, we cannot pretend about what is happening. People really do hate Donald Trump. All the left, all the deep state, all of those dark actors hate him. They want to kill him. Donald Trump and his movement, the Q movement and those who support him, as I do and have, support him because we hate the darkness. We hate the atrocities that the darkness has committed, and we want to see that end. So a lot of Christians have joined in that movement. Now, what has happened? Matthew 12, and specifically verse 26, says this, And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? I agree with Alexandra in that those who lead the Trump movement, the Q movement, are still in Satan's camp. But Satan has been divided. This was not what Satan wanted to do. This is not what Satan wanted to see happen. His kingdom cannot stand. This is a prophecy, I believe, that Jesus said, and this is how we recognize what is happening right now. Indeed, Satan's kingdom is divided. And one of the things I've tried to do and make clear in my videos is to wake Christians up to understand that Donald Trump probably is not a Christian. And there are a lot of people who think that he is going to be some kind of a savior, and he isn't. Or that he's going to usher in a new age, an, a new uh, golden age, and he isn't. He is not going to bring about the kingdom of God. But he is doing a specific work that God has put into his heart. And that's where we go to the second point of disagreement. And I've talked about this in depth in my previous videos as well. And this is in Revelation chapter 13. The first beast is the beast that rises from the sea, has ten horns and seven heads. I have discussed the seven heads in depth. And then chapter 17 of Revelation deals with the eighth head, who is one of the seven. And I have taught you that the eighth head is the reincarnation is probably not the right word, but the, the spirit that empowered Cyrus has come and is empowering Trump to do what he's doing. He is being empowered by one of the spirits that empowered one of the previous seven heads. It was the fourth head. 
to be exact, the head of Persia. Now, this beast that rises out of the sea has seven heads, seven different governments that controlled the earth throughout recorded history. I've discussed that in detail. Chapter 13, verse 11, talks about the second beast, the second beast that rises out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. Okay, this is the false prophet and I have discussed that and have taught you that every one of the beasts, every one of the beast kingdoms has false religion that always supports it. Every one of them. Trump is no different. So Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast. He has a second beast with him, which is the false prophet. The false prophet speaks like a lamb. It pretends to be the truth. It looks like the truth because it has horns like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. I think I misspoke. It doesn't speak like a lamb. It speaks like a dragon. But it looks like a lamb. It pretends to be something it isn't. And that's what, and that is one of the things that Alexandra is correct about. Q never talks about Jesus. Trump, so far as I know, never really talks about Jesus. He never says he has repented of his sins. He never talks about having a faith in Jesus that saves him from his sins. And that is the only way that any of us are ever going to get into the kingdom of heaven, into New Jerusalem. So those are the two, the two main points of disagreement that I have with her. Now it's easy to see why she thinks what she thinks because who would have ever thought that what we saw in Matthew 12 was a prophecy concerning the division of Satan's kingdom and that that division, that divorcement, which is what is prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I've discussed that as well. Usually you see the word apostasy. It means divorcement. There has been a divorcement in the kingdom of Satan. The dark followers of Satan hate Donald Trump and his people to the death. They would kill any of us who say that we support Donald Trump in a heartbeat. Look what's going on today. There are many many Christians who support Donald Trump, and I am one of them. And, and I have biblical authority for that because Daniel supported one of the beast kingdoms, and that was Nebuchadnezzar. He was very faithful to that beast, beast kingdom and to that beast king, even when that beast king was on the verge of being judged and sent out into the wilderness for seven years to live like a beast. And I've talked about that in previous video as well. Alexandra has not seen what Revelation chapter 17 is all about. She hasn't seen that God puts it into the heart of the eighth head of the beast, which is the fourth that's come back, the beast that was and is not but will come. God has put it into his heart to destroy Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the dark side of Satan that Alexander speaks about. Now, many people, many people who I believe are, are being very sincere and really want to see righteousness and truth come to the world, but are still totally engulfed in the new age, are supporting Donald Trump against the evil that they see everywhere. Also, a lot of people who are still doing evil have come out of Babylon. People who are involved in certain sins, sins that the Bible calls our sin, especially sexual sins, they have come out of the Democrat Party. They've come out of Babylon the Great, but they're still holding on to their sins, and they're not believing in Jesus for their salvation. They're not repenting of their sins. But they've come out of Babylon to that extent. They're with Donald Trump. My hope 
my belief is that what is going to happen is that Donald Trump will be successful in destroying Babylon the Great. He will be successful in destroying the deep state. And then, as the Bible says, he fights against the Lamb. You see that in Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation 19, where he fights against the Lamb. But each time it says that the Lamb destroys him in an instant. That destruction, I believe, is his salvation. That destruction is by the sword that comes out of the mouth of Jesus. That destruction is by throwing the beast, Donald Trump, and the false prophet into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the application of God's word to them, which means that they are destroyed in the flesh and that they are saved in the spirit, that they come into salvation. I believe that that will happen very, very soon after Donald Trump destroys Babylon the Great. And the reason I think that that's going to happen very soon is because the very last verse in Revelation chapter 18 says that the blood of all people ever killed on the earth is attributed to Babylon the Great. Well, if that's the case, then there's not going to be any more bloodshed after Babylon the Great is destroyed. The fight against the Lamb will begin, and then the glorification of the saints occurs. The marriage supper of the Lamb occurs. The coming back of Christ with his army occurs. And then the kingdom of God begins to rule on the earth. So I hope that that puts Alexandra's teaching into context with respect to what I teach. She is so, so accurate, so right on, so on target with what she says that it, in my opinion, it is profound and amazing that such a young person could have seen that so clearly and put that together so well. And I commend her for that and I bless her in the name of Jesus.